Here's how to make your carpet 10 times better. And here's how to build a face that actually blinks. And these are 41 Minecraft build hacks. And hey, the YouTube wizard bets me that you can't subscribe to the channel before this arrow hits me. So to prove them wrong, launch that red sub button down below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Don't go near this composter. Well, I warned you. With a sticky piston and a slab, we can add in an armor stand like this and pop up any mob that we choose out of our composter. And then the real kicker is that if we fill in the composter with something like hay, all of that compost can completely hide the head inside. Or rather, it'll hide it until it's too late. Since hanging roots can be waterlogged, if we combine pink glass with waterlogged hanging roots, we can place these in our ocean to make our very own jellyfish. And when viewed from the right angles, the direction of the roots even makes it look as if the jellyfish is swimming, which I think is just adorable. Don't don't worry, we didn't just drop steak on the ground, but instead, if we were to use steak in invisible item frames, we can make it look like muddy footprints on the dirt. Or you can make it look like someone tracked mud onto your white carpet. And you can even rotate them for an alternating pattern, which makes it even more believable. Cobwebs are annoying, but here they're essential. Because with just a trap door and a backboard, we have all we need to make ourselves a simple basketball hoop. And if you want, you can even pick up a piece of orange concrete and throw it through, and it'll fall right through the cobweb. Nothing but net. This is my pet parrot, but it needs a cage. And since it's so small, it doesn't need a whole pen like regular animals, but it can also fly, so the fence isn't that helpful. Enter the scaffolding block. With a single scaffolding like this, it looks like a wooden bird cage, and it has just the right amount of room for a parrot to sit snug inside. And even when they're in the cage, they'll still have plenty of room to dance when you put on the chirp music disc. Here's how to make a pool table. Since we're able to overlap carpet with signs, all we need to do is add green carpet to lay over an oak and spruce sign, and that'll make it look like a pool cue when you look at it from the top of the field. Which I've gotta say is much better than this old design of using grass blocks and signs around the edges. This escalator doesn't use any redstone, but instead we use looms, because from afar, the lines on the looms start to look like the ridges that you see on escalator steps. And if you add in a command block system like this, we can even make it functional with a teleport command. Stairs aren't the only block that you can use as stairs, and this modern design proves that. With a mix of end rods for a light source and these carpet covered iron trap doors, we get a unique floating staircase that still makes sense. And while this looks great, the only thing you should keep in mind is that you can only walk up these seamlessly if you start first from an end rod. Because because if you start from this block down here, you're gonna have to jump up at least the first step. With just a blue glass block and a tripwire hook, we can make this simple little water cooler for your office building. And while that alone should do the trick, if you wanna make the water in your water cooler even colder, let's use an ice block instead. Just as long as it doesn't melt from a nearby light source and spring a leak. Instead of placing your bed on the floor, place it in the sky. With this user's hammock, we get the perfect thing for our new mangrove swamps, or really any place that has trees. Just put your bed on some trap doors, connect it using stairs, fence gates, and carpet, and the end result will be more than worth it for a good night's rest. Now you might not have seen it, but this block's called the structure block. And I know it has a weird texture, but we'll use that perfectly for our new sound system. After getting this block with the give command, we can stack two together like this on top of an anvil, and it'll look like we have ourselves a tower of speakers. So if you have the admin privileges to get the item, it's worth putting in your house as a flex. The observer has a face texture, so we gotta put that to use. And I think this robot design is the perfect way to do that. With a blast furnace for the chest and an observer for the head, it looks like a convincingly steampunk robot. And the best part, is that using that blast furnace, you can smell your items inside and give a nice effect to the robot to make it look like it's coal powered. And similarly, if you want it to look deactivated, just don't smelt anything inside. Simple as that. Let's grow some tomatoes. Since if you think about it right, the rose bush plant actually starts to look like a tomato stalk. And with armor stands dropped into them like this, we can make it look even more as if the green of the bush grew on top of these wooden sticks, much like it does in a real tomato farm. With a couple of honeycomb blocks for the base and some twisted vines for the stem, we can put together the perfect jumbo pineapples for our new farm. And then we can add in some other leaves around it to make it look more like a proper pineapple patch. And hey, if you're looking for a light source with this, shroom lights should also do the job. They look close enough to the honeycomb texture and they'll make sure that no mobs sprout up like weeds next to the rest of your farm. If we tuck a villager into a minecart like this, its hat will still poke through the floor. So with enough slabs and a shepherd villager, we can make our very own moving Roomba that rides around your floor. And the funniest thing about this is that the villager can still pick up things like bread, carrots, and potatoes. So it'll help you clean up your food scraps after the five second rule. This carpet's bougie, but with one look, it's worth it. Especially since shulkers are now renewable as of recent updates. So we can use the spares that we get for this extra fancy carpet design. Just place your shulker boxes facing inward and you can have it in all the same colors that you would for a traditional carpet, making it an easy switch if you already have the funds. Scaffolding is a great block, but it doesn't look much like actual scaffolding. So instead, we're gonna use campfires. Since when we extinguish our campfires and then add in ladders and trap doors like this, it'll still be functional as scaffolding, but look a lot more believable to the actual thing. And at this point, this is the 
the kind of scaffolding that you wouldn't mind leaving up after you finish the build. By just adding in a few trap doors around a grass block, we get the perfect situation to add chains and have a hanging garden box. And the best part is that you can make this any size that you need it to be, which works great for your berry bushes, your flowers, or you can even detach flower pots like so for a smaller footprint, which obviously looks a lot better on your wall than just having some grass block floating there in the air. Infinite water sources are helpful, but ugly, but this should do the job well enough. It's a well, I don't know if that was clear. And here it looks like just one block of water, but when you pull from the inside, it'll refill from the water sources that we hit on the stairs from the side, letting it look minimalistic without minimizing the function. When you see lime terracotta, your first thought probably isn't lemonade, but when it's arranged like this, you'll reconsider. With this, we already have the perfect sign for a lemonade stand, and then we can use this trick with a gold helmet armor stand placed on five layers of snow and push a glass block over top for a jar of lemonade. And with a final trap door and a coral block, we'll make sure that we have any graves in case any ducks come by. When we step back here, this tunnel looks real, but as soon as we get up close, not so much. And the way we did that is because by using different shadings of blocks, we can get some pretty convincing depth. And if you ask me, that's an illusion good enough to fool Wily e. Coyote, let alone your friends. And if you're not a prankster, you could still use this technique to texture your build if you're limited for size, helping your walls seem more detailed than they actually are. Here we're going to use levers and trap doors, but not how you'd think, since instead of flipping them open, we're going to use those levers as a support, which if you step back to this view, looks very nice, almost as if we're using them to lift up the windowsill. And honestly, I think this would look great for any kind of shelves that you want to put inside of the house as well. Desert pyramids haven't changed a lot since they were added in, but we can fix that by adding in these hieroglyphics. By using a mix of red sandstone stairs and slabs for the different shapes, we can create some cool looking marks on our wall, like this ox, or even a person's silhouette. And if you're looking to go even further, use chiseled sandstone for a detailed face. That's going the extra mile. Here's how you can make your staircase look even better than it does with no extra cost. Now, if you've got a two wide staircase like this, just curve the one on the edge inward, and there you go, it has its very own railing, which is a cheap way to make your staircase look even better. And honestly, it'll even look fine if it's just floating like this, which will also make it cheaper. If you place two glass panes in a line like so, it makes for a convincing base for a modern looking table. And what I love most about this example is that this user used the lack of a texture to imply the T-shape of the legs of the table. Very clever. Mud and wood might not seem like they go together, but like this, they actually do. By just mixing in the new mangrove roots with the mud, we get the muddy mangrove roots that we need for a transition block. And that'll help us to blend in the trees that generate in our mangrove swamp, even better than the ones that spawn naturally. This might not look like a hot tub, but just wait. Since it's possible for campfires to emit smoke through a one block thick floor, we can place them underneath this and use the smoke stack to stand into steam from the water. And the good news is that if you get too close to the heat of the campfires underneath, the water up top can still cool you off if you catch a blaze. With glowing item frames, we can make lights without using any redstone. Like this example, using a mix of glowing item frames with regular item frames for a traffic light. And this could work with either the invisible variant or even having the item frames visible when you build it in survival. And honestly, I think this could work even better if you used fully colored maps of green, yellow, and red, but that's gonna be a lot more expensive to place the 16,384 blocks needed instead of just the one block in an item frame. With the help of glow ink sacks and gray dye, we can make our signs look like they're screwed down to the wall. All we need to use is this Unicode symbol called the bullet point, and we'll get that convincing round shape, which if we then type our text in the middle of the sign, it's gonna look a lot more important, and it should get your friends to pay attention to the message, so long as they don't dye it a different color. How did we make this wheelbarrow in vanilla? Well, the answer is expensive to do. If you put an armor stand on an enchantment table for the right height, you can add in another right chest plate for the wheels and then add in a minecart on top for the barrow, with finally a fence gate to finish off the handles. But again, expensive, so only do this in creative. Walls and fences don't naturally connect like this, but if we were to use a debug stick, we can fix that easily. And then if you're willing to take the time, we get a much cleaner looking pattern. But I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that this does take a lot of time with a debug stick, so uh, clear your afternoon. Minecraft banners don't show wear and tear, but we're about to add both of them in. By using gray patterns like this one on a gray wall of stone, we can make it look as if the banners were torn during a battle, which will help us tell the story of a more desecrated part of the castle. And since we can use even more muted colors for the dye, we can add those in and make it look as if the banner's fading with age. We added gears to Minecraft. Or rather, we added them back because they used to be in the game. And now, with a mix of copper stairs, we can create a number of different gear designs like this. And folks, there's so much variation here. You could use more stairs for a jagged one like this, or use less of them for one with more rounded edges. And whichever ones you choose, it's gonna work well to make your industrial base, well, industrial. This archway is entirely possible using no commands. And the reason for that is because rails don't break on trap doors when we flip them down. So we can make this design without using any structure voids or barrier blocks. Just have a rail up here, have the two ends point up to it, and then break the center so that they'll stay in place. It really is that easy. Instead of using dripstone for your traps, let's use it for walls instead. By using the different heights of the spikes, we can make a much more menacing fence around your base. And to me, this starts 
to look like the kind of pointy wood walls that you'd see in something like Clash of Clans, making this an even better fit for your early game rural base. Instead of stairs for your slopes, you should use walls, because wall blocks actually work better to smooth out the slopes of the roof than a stair. They're less gradual, and they'll work better in more steep situations, which means that we can get the same job done in a smaller space, which is always a plus. Don't let your candle on fire, but instead, you might want to try this. See, by adding in unlit gray candles to the top of our iron fence, we have the perfect detail in for our metal bars. And what's even better in my eyes is that the wick out the top even kind of looks like barbed wire poking out. A nice touch. When banners do their swaying animation, they clip within certain blocks, which seems like a glitch, but we're gonna use it as a feature. With trap doors in this banner pattern, we can make it look as if this face is actually blinking, or at the very least, it's checking its surroundings before it goes back to sleep. No animals were harmed in the making of this hack, but it sure looks like they were. Because even though there's no moose that are in Minecraft, by using just a simple stair and some closed fence gates, we can make it look as if we mounted the mob's head right on top of our wall. And that way, we'll be able to take after Gaston and start to use antlers in all your decorating. According to Mojang, they are considering adding a crab to the game, but we've already added one. By using acacia fence gates and red sandstone walls and slabs, we have enough orange blocks to already make our base. And then, if we add in orange candles for the crab's eyes, the whole thing's done. Plus, it's not as dangerous as an actual crab, so feel free to get close and check it out. Here's why we use the hoglin in our build. If we were to summon in a hoglin using this tag is immune to zombification, then we'll be able to keep it alive long enough to play dead. And then, after we add in the dinner bone name tag to it, with some end rods over top laying out horizontally, we get ourselves the perfect pig on a spit illusion that'll be ready for our next Hawaiian luau. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, alright?